Hello everyone, this is Christina within the garden. Today we are gonna be trimming boxwoods with our DeWalt hedge trimmer. And this one's a battery operated one. We've had it for over a year and we don't have a lot of boxwoods or hedges. We have six. We have four cone boxwoods and two round boxwoods. Um, and today we're gonna to be trimming them. But before we get started, some things you need to know about boxwoods. So in the spring and in the fall is a good time to trim those. Um, trimming means shearing back and shaping. Uh, what we're gonna be doing is shaping these. We bought them last year and went ahead and put them in um, behind our house. And then we took some boxwoods that we had out front because we're gonna put a deck out front and we put them by the shop. So we're gonna trim those up today. These will be cones, those will be round. The idea here is if you're going to shape things, do it before it gets hot. And the reason that is, is because once it gets hot, the leaves will burn and you don't wanna expose new foliage or inside growth to um, high heats of 80 to 120. Here in Eastern Washington, it gets really hot so this is the perfect time. Now I will tell you one thing, let's take a look at this. Okay, so this is a new boxwood and it has all of this growth on it, which when our plants grow, we love to see that and we're really hesitant to actually trim it. What will happen is, is we're gonna just shear up the edges and as we do that and build shape and create airflow, it'll actually flush out new growth. So it's good for these plants to do that. You can't see that this far away, but there is some dead growth here. And so we're gonna be trimming that back as well. Some right here too, which might've just been from the weed treatment we were doing. Um, but the idea here is when you prune, you create opportunities for new growth. So when we head off the end of a stem, two others will grow in its place. So it'll fill in, make this look more full and shapely. So let's get started, okay? Okay, something to point out. This is the first one that we got completed. So I probably won't explain it on every single one, but I did want to on this one. If you notice, there's some growth missing here and some growth missing here. Now we could trim the tree on that side to match, but the idea is, is that we don't want to take back all the new growth that it just put on. So it'll look weird the first, second, maybe even third year that you're trimming your boxwoods. And it's okay. Try not to overthink it. They will fill in. This area should grow more. There's actually some growth coming up here. It should fill in. We don't want to take it back so much that it exposes the inside canopy. Even though these are actually super dense, so they were trained really well, um, we do not want to expose the inside canopy because it'll burn. So let's trim the rest, but just know if you're seeing gaps here, here, or on the back side there was one, it's just part of trimming boxwoods and having them for multiple years to come. The great thing, excuse me, is um, these stay green uh, through the winter months. And so you have winter interest, which is nice living in the Pacific Northwest or anywhere that has um, evergreen varieties of both trees and shrubs because you do lose a lot of the vibrant colors in the winter and so these boxwoods are there for you. So let's get to trimming the rest of them and you'll see how that
So we blew off the area from the boxwoods. I do want to point out a couple things. This is our smallest, and it's actually outside of the frame. Let me move it up. This is our smallest one. It gets the most sun. The back half of it showed the most growth where it's shaded. So it might just be the one that takes forever for us to grow. The second one in probably is our second most successful. The third one is showing the most growth. So it actually from that one the least. And then the one down from there, again, the peak, the head. I might actually take that off, top it off like I did this one to allow for the head to, or the point on the cone to reshape. So I might go over there and trim that real quick. Um, if you're hearing dirt bikes, my kids are out today and during my videos, a dog could be barking. Our neighbor has a cow down the way. Um, our kids could be running around. So I did blow everything off into the grass. I blew it kind of further out because um, we get really bad winds and I don't want it to blow back in. The lawn gets mowed on Thursday. So this will all just come up with the lawn mowing. So we, now we're gonna go down to the shop area and really quick do a trim of the circular ones. Those ones should be super easy. We've had those for four years. This is their first year on the cone one, cone boxwoods. And the reason I gingerly trimmed them and didn't take too much off was because I don't want to do a hard prune in the first couple years. So do know that if you want to trim your boxwood more, you're welcome to do so. I just didn't feel like we needed to do that this year. I wanted to take a minute and just talk about how proud I am of Joe and I for taking this property and making it into something. As I was walking down and coming back up, I'm a little winded because, let's be honest, totally out of shape. You hear the kids? Well, here's what I'm proud about. We bought this house, and I'll spin around for a view. This home had nothing but tumbleweeds and dirt. And so there was no sprinkler systems, there was no grass, there was no retaining walls like you're seeing. Let's see if I can. Right there. None of these things were here. The shop wasn't here, none of it. Let me flip you around. Okay, so the neighbor up there at the top of the hill bought this lot next to us so that he could maintain his view. Hopefully you can hear me over the kids. Well, that's great. So this is what our lot looked like. Just sagebrush and unmaintained yard. Now this actually looks better because my husband went over and took off all of these large sagebrushy trees. So before it was completely full of huge sagebrush, kind of like actually right here, this perimeter right here. And so he ripped it all out so the kids could ride their dirt bikes on it is super fun if you live in the country to ride your dirt bikes on things well that's what our yard looked like and so we've been here four years and now now we have our house we the shed was there put in garden beds put in the grass put in the retaining walls put in sprinkler systems before the grass put in the trees put in this driveway and this shed and we have a slender view of the Yakima River. So I'm gonna finish Boxwoods because obviously Baby Joe's not gonna make it. Um, I'm gonna do that really quick. And if you ever have any questions about our yard or how we did it, um, please comment below. So the round box woods are trimmed. Let's show you those. As you can see, this one actually gets watered by the sprinkler. So we weren't able to blow it off and I definitely didn't want to trim more 
Some of the weight of the water was weighing down the really light new growth. And so I'm gonna wait for it to dry, see if there's any light haircutty kind of trimming I need to do. But overall that was a success. So that's boxwood one that was round. And these were in the front of our house as a reminder. So we transplanted them here. They did not like it the first year they were out here. So I'm shocked that they didn't die. Um, but again, that's a round boxwood. Let's show you the other one. Okay, and there's the other. What you should know about this is that it's, when you don't put them next to each other and they're not a hedge, they're like eyebrows, right? Eyebrows, women often say are sisters, not twins. And so um, they don't have to be identical. That's the moral of that story. And now that we're down at the shop, let's show you a view of the yard from this vantage point. So like I said, this was all, let's see if we can go this way. This was all dirt. We call it moon dust dirt because when you would step in it, it would literally puff up like flour and feel like we were walking around in what we thought moon dust would be like. Um, there's the detached garage and the shed. There's our retaining wall that we put in. All of this grass was put in by us. Um, the garden beds, everything. Everything you see, we did. The only thing that was here when we bought the house was the home the detached garage and the shed. No landscaping was done, nothing. And in fact, this, let's turn this around. This shop wasn't here either. Let me give you a view of, okay. So, kids four wheelers are out. Let's take a look at this. This is a 40 by 40 shop we had built. We house in here our boat, our RV, my brother-in-law's trailer, my husband's Jeep that they're repairing today. Um, we put in this basketball hoop ourselves for our kids for Christmas. And there is a vineyard behind us owned by Bob. Bob owns that trailer up there and he owns 19 acres with the vineyard. So most of our family pictures are taken in that vineyard. And again, here's the view. We've got work, you can see cardboard, um, wood from Joe's last projects and the yard. Now later today, what I'm gonna do, and this is the lot next to us, later today what I'm gonna do is transplant some hostas. So if you see that video next, and I'm wearing the same thing, I'm actually gonna take a break, go take care of the baby, and then um, transplant the hostas out front. They were a gift from Larry and Bonnie. I absolutely love them. Um, hostas naturalized, so they've created multiples of themselves, and they're in a container, and they're just way too big. So we're gonna do that next. Here's a view of the yard. We absolutely love it. We hope you do too. If you have any questions on the things that we did, please let us know.